Alexis, you've got kind of a, an interesting take here. It's not David versus Goliath. Uh, in this case, you make the point it's really Goliath uh, versus Goliath. You didn't, do you, do you see any benefit in terms of uh, bringing the Wall Street to a wider um, audience and, and democratizing the financial markets? That isn't what, what happened here. It's, it's more uh, sort of uh, a rigged game for the professionals is what we're watching. I do think that the largest Wall Street players have these very deep structural advantages. And I say that as somebody who used to work there. I absolutely think that there are some retail traders that made a lot of money throughout this whole GameStop saga. And I would not dispute that. But there are also probably a lot of people who bought at the top and perhaps lost money that they couldn't afford to lose. And so I think it's a little bit of a mixed bag. You know, I think financial literacy is always a good goal to achieve, but I've never really been somebody that's convinced that financial literacy is a good anti-poverty program. I think, you know, last year's stimulus and this year's stimulus is a much better, more effective anti-poverty program than perhaps, you know, throwing, you know, trying your luck in the financial markets, which can be very risky. Well, that kind of goes against the whole idea that if you give someone, you know, you give them, a, it's, it's old and hackneyed, but you give them a fish, they eat the fish, you know, teach them how to fish, and they catch their own fish. It kind of goes against that. And I mean, just giving out stimulus money, how many times, what, what are we going to do, UBI, universal basic income? I mean, it would help if people knew how to plan for their retirement. You make the point that order flow, maybe you should, being paid for order flow, you would actually possibly prohibit that from happening and you suggest that anyone who tries to save for retirement has to give Wall Street a cut, has to give it. And you want a public option for people uh, to try to plan for retirement. What, what does that even mean, Alexis? So right now, if you want to save for retirement, there's really only two ways that you can do it without having a Wall Street middle van. You can invest in a savings bond directly with the government, which doesn't give you a very high rate of return. Or if you're pretty wealthy, you could buy a municipal bond. But it doesn't need to be that way. Those are a bunch of policy choices that we've made. If you go back to the New Deal, there was a very large public entity called the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, which invested in a lot of public projects. And there's a really interesting proposal called the National Investment Authority by a professor out of Cornell named Saleh Omarova that makes the argument that private markets are really bad at funding things that last more than a lifetime to show a return on their investment, these sort of moonshot projects that may take a really long time. And so the idea behind that proposal is you would have a public investment fund that could fund things like roads and infrastructures, but also maybe you know going to Mars or beyond Mars, things that might take a very long time and the government might be better suited to invest in than the private markets. And that would also give people a way to invest in public projects instead of having to give Wall Street a cut every time they put money in their 401k or participate in the, in the financial markets. Well, some of this, if you're not doing a, a GameStop trade, if, if you're doing more conventional investing where, let's say, five years ago, 10 years ago, you, your 401k or whatever you were using, you were investing long term into the S&P or, or S&P stocks. I mean, on, on the, the transaction costs you're talking about are, are literally a fractions of a penny or pennies per share. And over five or 10 years, you've seen your, uh, you've, there's nothing that grows at 7% a year other than, than Wall Street or, or stocks. So it, it just seems like you're, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about, I don't even know if, if the fees you're talking about, that Wall Street's cut is even material to someone that's trying to save for retirement. And if they had the financial knowledge and training and wherewithal to be able to evaluate Graham and Dodd type situations and, and growth, I don't see why that, that's a bad thing. I, I well, can't I imagine, I can't imagine turning it over to the government. Have... I, I wouldn't want to turn my money over to the government. That to, for them to help grow it for retirement, because I'm going to end up getting back probably less than I put in. Well, I think everyone likes choice, and so I don't think anyone would be forcing you to invest in a national investment authority, but I do think it would be nice to have the option, which is why I call it a sort of public option for Wall Street. But I think that the issue here is not that people don't want to invest in the private markets and not that if you buy and hold, that's a bad strategy. I think over time that has proven to be a good strategy. The issue is 47% of the country has no access to the stock market, has no pension, has no 401k, because people are living paycheck to paycheck. And my argument is, I do think that there are policy decisions that have led to people living on the edges of society like that, and we should work to boost them up. And I think the stimulus payments have been a really life-saving 
thing that has helped some of those people who don't have the excess capital to invest in the financial markets, who might be facing eviction, who are living paycheck to paycheck, who don't have $300 to cover an emergency. So it's a both and, it's not an either or. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.